Hey, welcome back to Sling Caper. So it's another week, um, the beginning of week two on the uh, Sling TSI Quick Build Fuselage. So here we are, I'm just messing around with the centre control quadrant here. Now, um, we are going with the MT Constant Speed Prop, and so that's what they've sent us, is the um, quadrant for the, for the variable, or the Constant Speed Prop rather. And so um, it has the prop control lever in the middle. However, we're gonna be going with the RS Flight Systems um, single lever control so we don't need that so what I'm doing now is just going through the parts of what we've got and what we need and just going to uh, go back and see if we can get some parts swapped also we're going to be going for Behringer wheels and brakes which I think I've discussed before so the part brakes will be different now in true sling form the TSI manual doesn't have all the information I need it doesn't mention this throttle quadrant at all so on here I have the high wing build manual and this has the prop control so that's the closest I've got here so I should be able to mix and match and get what I need um, and get things underway hopefully. Okay, so here's a funny thing so this is what a South African power cord looks like um, three really big prongs and so it follows that the, the socket would look like this. And so here's a wall socket with the three big prongs as you'd expect. However, lots of things come with these which have got these little prongs. And so in order to use a lot of things in South Africa, you'd need one of these. So I can't imagine how many of these you'd need in each home, but I imagine it's quite a lot because a lot of um, things come with these little prongs. So here I am about to charge my battery for my drill and I need one of these. So far I've been fortunate in that the um, high wing kit seems to be the one that's got all the information I need. So I've obviously just carried that across which makes sense. One little trap I've realised is that these um, friction spaces here that they have have still got the plastic on them. A little bit hard to tell until you look closely so I'm having to pull that off and then clean up all the burrs off it. That's a lot better and as you probably guessed we've actually we're going for the handbrake option as opposed to the toe brakes so um, that's the start to it. Exciting times we've um, Got a big box from Sling turn up and hopefully that's our 43 missing parts. I don't think it's actually the whole lot but it's pretty close to it. So um, Glenn did well um, pushing them along to get that. So we've finally got it which is great news and uh, that will hopefully help me move on a little bit. Also in the process I've been um, pulling the nose wheel off so that can go back to Sling so we can uh, get the Behringer kit that um, Glenn wanted in the first place. Um, the only problem is I'm going to need a jack to get the fuselage up in order to get the mains off so that'll be something I'll try and sort out uh, later on either today or in this week at least. And when I looked a bit closer it was light enough to lift up on one side and just put it on blocks so here's all the wheels after I've taken them off ready for a swap. And I'm on to installing the cowl mount strip at the moment this was one of our back ordered parts so I've now got this. Um, I thought it was going to be a really quick job, a little bit more to it than first meets the eye really. There's an aluminium spacer strip that goes down in between it um, and since everything's dimpled and that strip is not even drilled then you really just can't do the whole lot at once, it really needs to be done one thing at a time. Also as you can see this, um, the firewall sits proud of the um, side skins here which isn't really ideal. So. I'm just going through and I'm trying to clamp it as best I can and then match drilling the holes and just going down one, uh, you know, a few at a time. And then because when you get to the curve and because it's being held back because of the dimples, you really need to pull them out, dimple it and then continue. So, but, you know, it's do a few, pull it out, 
dimple it, put it back in. A um, bit more to it than I thought. Maybe there's uh, a better way. I'm certainly no expert, but uh, anyhow, that's how I'm doing it. Whew, big week. Um, 310 hours so far, and I've made a huge mess down there. Um, Harry doesn't like buying rubbish bins because they're too expensive apparently, so I'm dealing with that just for now. But he'll be back next week, and so that's his problem. So starting on some of the electrical stuff, um, put in one of those Deutsch connectors there um, for the lights out on the port wing, getting ready to put the fuel lines in this side when we get some lines. Haven't done anything on the other side, but uh, have run a few wires down here, that's the um, Deutsch connector down there. Um, what else have I done? Put the flat um, motor in there and just holding that in place really to stop it all flopping around. Also doing my best to reduce parts count, it makes it a little bit easier to find stuff then. And um, putting these um, cross um, push rods in here and the push rods onto the the servo, I figured it would be easier just while it's, um, there's not too much else going on around there. And it wasn't too bad actually, a little bit frustrating, but I did, um, if we look down here, I put this box down here to stop it falling over on its snout, um, because of course there's no wheels on it now. So um, then I can actually climb in, so I can sit in the thing, that makes a huge difference. So now um, a few tools floating around in there, but um, some more of the wiring just before I tidy it all up, just sort of sitting in there. And the um, headphone and mic jacks, jacks for both sides, <coughs> I haven't got the insulating washers for the thing. Ooh, the camera went all wobbly there. Haven't got the insulating washers for that yet. Having to go to a voiceover here because the music in the background was too loud. You can see that I started doing the sealant, but unfortunately the gun they gave me was garbage and after a short period of time, the handle collapsed. So a couple of days later I went and bought a new gun, but by the time I got back to the sealant, that had gone hard. So now I need some more sealant. So that was a bit of a flop, but uh, never mind. Moving on, we have the rudder pedals in there and the stops all trimmed and the main control system is installed, the cross linkage is installed and it all seems to be free and smooth. Just by the rudder pedals there I put a little bit of paint in there, just that grey metallic paint just to finish it off a little bit so if you did actually see in under there I don't think there's any carpet on that piece so that will just sort of cover that up. Um, perhaps forward of the rudders there'll be a little bit of foam or something but certainly the channel that the rudder bars sit in um, I don't think anything goes in there so it just really just to finish it off a little bit just being a little bit picky that's about it. Continuing the voiceover because the music's so loud um, I've trimmed this piece here which is for the canopy where it was rubbing inside here where I'm pointing at and I've just cut along those two lines and just eased it out and I've just put a little bit of bog in there just to hold it like that and then I'm going to sand that off and put some fiberglass layers over the top. On our part shelf um, I've been reducing the parts count by making small sub assemblies so there's a few things riveted together, a few things clecoed together, just makes it a little bit easier to find things. Um, it's just little bits of hardware now is the stuff I need to search for. A still shot of me sitting in the back of the aeroplane while I was feeding some wires around. When you're sitting bolt upright, there's not a whole lot of headroom, but I think with the back seats in, it'll be just fine. Well, news for 320 hours. Um, been a busy few days. It's very difficult to get any um, visual progress, but done a lot of things. Um, had Glenn here yesterday, so we didn't get a whole lot done as far as building was concerned, but... Um, certainly cleared up a few problems we had with uh, a lot of missing things, um, some of it from seeing some of our other things that we just need to sort out and just some sort of forward planning. So uh, that was really good actually. Also had uh, Jonathan here and he did a little bit of riveting. He enjoyed it too I think for the bit that he did. Show 
might only be 49% now because oh. Jonathan's done 2%. Oh, that's true. But then, alas, we run out of rivets. Um, so the 998 rivets, the 3.2 domed aluminium steel rivets, we've got plenty of these um, countersunk rivets. And I suspect that when Sling gave us this, they intended it to be uh, the 998s, but we've got these ones, which are 989s, and don't really have any use for them. So that's a bit of a bummer because um, whoop, I'll just make a mess here. Great. Well, that was fun. Right, so um, the part that goes over the canopy here, I've um, reshaped the back of it and I'm just in the middle of bogging it, just starting the bog to uh, reshape it and tidy it up. So we're getting there with that. Um, at least that now clears the mechanism, so there's plenty of room there. Um, it's a mess in here still with uh, lots of wire going all over the, all over the show. Um, down here, I still need to uh, secure it. It's just sort of sitting there at the minute. And um, some coax, I've got some more of that to run. There's, there's one there. And um, I will say, on closer inspection, I screwed up one of the plugs. I'm gonna have to put that, put another one on there to, um, just because I hadn't got the pin fully engaged. It's a pain. However, um, that's life. Moving on up on the firewall. Um, getting ready to start some wiring. So I've got the master contact mounted here. I've got the main um, 30 amp breaker here. So that should uh, wire in relatively straightforward from the battery through to the contactor, through to the shunt, down to the breaker and um, places on from there. So that's uh, pretty much set up there. The system here um, just sort of planning this for the hybrid solid tubes and um, rubber lines forward to the firewall. It's actually, at least it's easier to replace them. So um, that will be probably um, rubber in a few places. And inside we'll have all um, solid aluminium lines. So that brings up an interesting point. So the kit comes with four check valves. Um, this isn't set up correctly at the moment, but these are. This will be um, for the the Rotax fuel pumps with the check valves for them. So there's two like this that come with a um, AN6 fittings on here, and then you get another two um, which have these hose barbs for the rubber tubes. One of them is the Rotax variety um, for the different brake pressure. Um, anyway, the interesting thing is, is that the, the kit plans show that you require five system here that's in the kit assembly instructions. And with close inspection, we can count one, two, three, four. And this one is also a check valve five. Um, looking at the description, K is a standard check valve which is that one and L being the the Rotax higher breakaway pressure valve so this is the standard Rotax style valves and that's a normal lower breakaway pressure check valve either way there's five here the supply only has four um, so that's a little bit of a pest so that means you need to either hit them up for one that they probably should have supplied, in which case you're going to get one with hose barbs, I would imagine, or you're up for about 200 and something US dollars for a new one. So a little bit of an irk. Anyway, we're getting used to all that now. Right, so that's it really. So um, moving right along, Glenn's gone back to the US. He'll be bringing some more bits back um, Harry is due back in the week, so um, I believe he's got a bit of FOMO from um, wondering what's going on in here. 
but uh, yeah, they're making, making progress, it just doesn't really much look like it. See you next time.